Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Virginia Bruce in Edna Ferber's So Big on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present another story by an author whose works have proved increasingly popular on our Thursday night shows. And I mean Edna Ferber, whose colorful and romantic stories of American life have lost none of their appeal. Our choice for dramatization tonight is that grand novel, So Big, a story of the Middle West back in the 80s. It's particularly noteworthy for its portrayal of a woman in whom strength of character and charm are well combined. And for this reason, you'll doubtless agree with me that it's appropriate to have in the starring role that fine actress, Virginia Bruce. And now, Frank Goss, how about a word from you? There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Edna Ferber's So Big, starring Virginia Bruce. Sometimes they say to me, you must get lonely sitting there alone before your fire through the long winter evenings. But they don't realize how many old friends sit beside me. They don't realize the words I listen to or the laughter that wraps itself warmly about me. Oh, yes, the laughter. They don't see that my father, Simeon Peak, sits across from me, dapper, soft-spoken, ironic. He sits there in his shiny boots with his hat a little on the side of his head. And I listen to his laughter and I'm 19 again. That easily I discard the years. Oh, oh, oh. Father, what are you laughing oh, at? Oh, that what a proper young lady it is indeed. Sometimes I wonder if Miss Fister's school for young ladies isn't much too proper a place to send a girl. I wonder if your mother had lived, what she would say. Well, I couldn't go any place but Miss Fister's. My best friend goes there. Julie and I have decided to be the Jane Austens of our time. I'm going to observe life and write about no, it. No, don't observe it. Live it, like you and I have done. There are two kinds of good people in the world, Selina. Wheat and emerald. We're emerald, you and I. We know that life is a grand adventure, a fine show. <laughs> the trick is to play in it and look at it at the same time. The more kinds of people you see and the more things you do and the more things that happen to you, the richer you are. My father died a short time later, leaving me with $400 in cash, two diamonds, and a philosophy of life. Yes, sometimes they say to me, you must get lonely sitting there alone before your fire. But they don't realize the words I listen to or the laughter that wraps itself about me. <laughs> Klaus Pohl, yes, Klaus Pohl sits beside my fire too of an evening. Klaus Pohl rode me out on his wagon when I went to High Prairie to teach in a Dutch country school. How he laughed at me as we rode. How he laughed at me. <laughs> oh, my sights ache from laughing. 
<laughs> Cabbages is beautiful, she said. <laughs> Cabbages is beautiful. But, but they are. Look at them in the fields. They're like jade and burgundy. But they're like jewels. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> Here we are, Miss Selena. Doppler is waiting, Claude. Good, Marcia. Here, jump down, teacher. Oh. Marcia, here's school teacher. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Make you welcome. You know what she says, Marcia? She says, cabbages is beautiful. <laughs> what do you say to that, Marcia? <laughs> cabbages is beautiful. <laughs> they don't realize when they think I must be lonely of the words I listen to and the laughter I hear. Why, sometimes, sometimes I hear a whole room full of laughter. I hear it and I fight back the angry tears just as I fought them back the night of the box lunch supper when I met Purvis the Young. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, after the bulging hemp was been auctioning off, this dainty shoebox should be most tempting. Oh. See, it is tied with a ribbon, and within it is a dainty lunch prepared by the tiny hands of the school teacher. Oh, if, I, if I could only see, I can't see a thing, and it's my box. Oh, here, teacher, I, I lift you up. You'll be able to see over their heads then. Oh, thank you. You're Purvis de Young, aren't you? Uh, yes. I'm the school teacher, Selena Peek. I know, I've seen you in church. Oh, come, what have I been for this here lovely little toothful gent? Uh, uh, five cents. <laughs> Maybe I'd just as soon not see what's going on. Oh, don't mind them laughing. It's just that all the women try to outdo themselves packing hampers with pies and cakes and chickens, and but yours is so little. Five cents I'm bid for this tempting tidbit put up by the school teacher's own fair hands. Five cents. Fifty Five. cents. Fifty cents, I'm bid. Uh, one oh. dollar. Oh, thank you. And ten. One ten, I'm bid for this box tied with a ribbon to match the gown of the girl who brought it. Uh, gents, gents, remember, it ain't only a lunch, it's a picture. <laughs> it pleases the eye. Do I hear Five one? Five bid. A dollar and a half. Uh, two dollars. Two. <laughs> two. Uh, and ten. Two and a quarter. Uh, two fifty. Two and a half. Uh, four. Oh, I wish they'd stop. Please stop, Mr. De Young. Uh, five. Six. And ten. Seven. Oh, Mr. De Young, you must listen to me. It's only jelly sandwiches. Eight. Nine. Nine. Nine, I bid. Nine. 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 Who'll make it? Let him have it. The cupcakes fell a little. No, ten. Oh, ten. 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 Oh. Ten. Do I hear eleven? Do I hear ten, fifty, ten. Ten, ten, the dance ten once, ten twice, gone for ten dollars to Purvis and a bargain. I told you they were just jelly sandwiches. They're good. Ten dollars. What on earth made you do it? Oh, I don't know. You, you looked so little. And I didn't like them making fun of you. That's a very foolish reason for throwing away ten dollars. Oh. I'm a truck farmer. I can't hardly write at all, only to sign my name, things like that. When I take my vegetables to the market in Chicago, the fellows are, are too sharp for me. They do numbers in their head, quick, like, uh, like that. Would you like me to teach you? Oh, when? Evening. Couldn't you come to the house? I, I'd be glad to teach you. It's almost time for Purvis to come. Yes, Marcia. He has made good pupils. Oh, yes, very good. Yes, handsome man. Yes. Has been many caps set for him since his wife died. Yes, sir. I'm sure there have been. Look, I show you something in the chest there. Oh, how beautiful. Yes, a Dutch bridal gown. A cap and bridal shoes. It was my mother's and mine. 
So, you get married to a high prairie Dutchman like Therbus. I let you wear it. Marge, you can't think that I... That he... I mean, even if oh, I did love him, I... Oh, you young, and it no good does to try to run away from life. Is spring for you, as well as for the world, Selina? No. No, it isn't going to be this kind of thing for me. No, Marge, no. Would you mind repeating the problem, Selina? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Purvis. The owner of the southwest quarter sells a strip 20 rods wide along the south side of his farm. Uh -huh. How much does he receive at $150 per acre? Well, no. Let's see. The square root is... Uh... Figure it on the slate. Uh, oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the square root is... Uh, the square root of... 576 is... The remainder must contain twice the product of the tens by the units plus the square of the units. Huh? And twice the tens times the units plus the square of the units is the unit. Yeah, but... Therefore, add four units to the 40 and multiply the result by four. Therefore, the square root of 576 is 24. What did you say? Now then, suppose you do that for me. We'll wipe everything off the slate. There. What must the remainder contain? Uh, the remainder must contain twice product, uh, tens, units, uh, plus the square of the units uh, is the same as the sum, twice the tens, Twice the, the tens. The tens. Oh, Selina. Purvis. Selina, will you marry me? Will you please marry me? We were married in May, just two months later. I, the daughter of Simeon Peak, was married to Purvis de Jong, truck farmer. I loved him, but as the long days started at four in the kitchen, I found need of my father's words and said them over and over. The more things that happen to you, the richer you are. No, no one realizes how many friends sit beside me in the fire or how the warm web of laughter spins itself around me. Dirk was a happy child. Some said he was born laughing. I do know he laughed most of the days after he was born. Hey, listen to that little fella. Fella, I better get out to my hoeing. Soon it will be time to start taking the vegetables to the market. I have to get a good price this year with their wife and son to support. Have a big dinner, Selina. I'll be hungry. Here, Dirk, darling. Hold up your arms and let Mother pick you up. That's right. That's my big boy. There. Oh, he's so big. So big. Oh, yes, he's so big that he's a whole, fat, wonderful world in himself. I'm not so big, Dirk. Not nearly as big as I used to think I was going to be. But you are going to do all the things I dreamed of doing. Oh, you're going to be so big, Dirk. So big. <laughs> In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of So Big, starring Virginia Bruce. An obscure Scottish plowman left his farm one day, a century and a half ago, and entered the drawing rooms of Edinburgh. There, mingling with Scotland's most gifted scholars, they recognize the importance, the power, of simple, carefully chosen words. 
That's why you always find a Hallmark greeting card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And the Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. And now we present the second act of Edna Ferber's So Big, starring Virginia Bruce. Sometimes they say to me, you must get lonely sitting there alone before your fire through the long winter evenings. <laughs> but they don't realize how many old friends sit beside me. They don't realize the words I listen to or the laughter that fills my memories. <laughs> Dirk's laughter. <laughs> he laughed when he was happy, sometimes when he was sad. And sometimes when he was frightened and didn't know quite how to act. <laughs> Dirk, dear, don't laugh like that. Someone might hear. Does it matter if someone hears? Well, it does today, darling. <laughs> you see, your father's dead and everyone has come to mourn. I want my father back. I know, I know. So do I. But, Dirk, you're the man of the house now. And the farm has got to be taken care of. Only after the vegetables are pulled, hauled to market, and sold will there then be time for grief. Shall I take the garden truck on the wagon to Chicago again, Monday? No, Jan. You're a fine hired man, but I'm afraid as a salesman you leave something to be desired. You brought back over half the load yesterday. I'll go myself Monday. A woman, a high prairie farmer's wife, drive to market like a man, alone at night in the marketplace... The hay market is no place for a woman. The vegetables are rotting in the ground. And Dirk and I must live. I'll take care of Mama. Of course you will. You're so big. The horses are ready. Let's go, Mama. Dirk, look at that wagon load a minute. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the carrots. Don't they look like golden spears? And the radishes and the beets and the cauliflowers. Look at those colors. Crimson and green and white and gold and purple. Aren't they beautiful, Dirk? Aren't they beautiful? What, Mama? Someday you'll know, Dirk. Someday you'll look at cabbages and see jade and burgundy, too. They won't buy from a woman at the market. But if they won't, I'll peddle the vegetables from door to door. Where's your license for peddling? License? Did you say license, officer? Yeah, you heard me. License. Where's your peddler's license? You got one, I suppose. Why, no. No. Oh, Mama. Where do you think you are, peddling in a neighborhood like this without a license? Oh, it's a woman peddling without a license, Mrs. Miller. Now get along with you. Wait a minute. Just a minute, officer. What? Well, this is Selena. Selena, look at me. It's Julie, don't you remember? I went to school at Miss Sisters with you. Of course. Julie. Oh, Selena, look at you. Oh, there, there. <laughs> It's all right, Julie. It's all right. Don't cry. Well, what's there to cry for? We all change. What's there to cry for? It's all right, officer. This is a friend of mine. All right, Mrs. Miller. But you'll have to get a license. Come in the house, Selena. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> Selena, what are you laughing at? Do you see those cabbages, Julie? You remember how I used to hate boiled cabbage at school? That's nothing to laugh at. It. <laughs> now stop laughing. Stop it. Stop it. I'll stop. I was just laughing at my ignorance. Sweat and blood and health and youth go into every cabbage. Did you know that, Julie? One doesn't despise them as food, knowing that. 
Come, climb down, Dirk. Here's a lady mother used to know. Oh, years and years ago when she was a girl. Thousands of years ago. <laughs> As I sit here before my fire of a winter evening, many are the friends that sit beside me, and sweet is the sound of their laughter. <laughs> Julie's father, August Hempel, and Julie sat in this room, and August laughed at me. Oh, how he laughed. <laughs> I wish I could have seen the expression on their faces when you said that cabbages were beautiful. <laughs> well, I still think they are. <laughs> Well, Selina, you must get down to business. I've been all over your property. What do you want to do with it? I want to stay here and work the farm, make it pay. I want Dirk to have all the worthwhile things in life. Leisure, color, travel, books, music, pictures, people, all kinds of people. Work that he can love. A chance to grow himself and watch other people grow. To feel strong about things and then develop that feeling and make something fine come of it. I want Dirk to create and feel and know. I want him to stand high among the people who appreciate and respond. I want him to be big. So big. August Temple financed my farm, and with the money, Dirk went to good schools and finally to the university. I was proud of him. But of all the laughter I remember, it is only Dirk's laughter that hurts a little bit. Why do you keep all this rubbish in this chest, Mother? Look at this silly old dress collecting moths. Why, it's the dress I wore at the rally. The night your father paid $10 for my lunchbox. <laughs> Look here, pressed flowers. They went out with a minuet, didn't they? Your father walked five miles to pick them. <laughs> Funny how people treasure old stuff like that. Useless stuff. It isn't even beautiful. Beautiful? Why, Dirk, you don't even know what beauty is if you can say a thing like that. Well, Mother, there's something I've got to tell you. I'm not going into architecture after all. I've been offered a job as bond salesman in the Great Lakes Trust Company. Oh. Oh, I see. Well, I can make more in a week there than I can in a year in an office doing architecture. Well, there isn't much fun in that, is there? But architecture. Think of it, Dirk. Steel and stone and brick with engines throbbing inside it like a heart and people going in and out. Part of a city. A piece of actual beauty conceived by you. Oh, Dirk. Yes, Mother. Cabbages are beautiful. I know you're disappointed. But I haven't got it inside of me like you had. I'm not a creator. I'm afraid I'm not so big after all. No. No, don't say that, Dirk. Well, you've had a full life and a rich life and well, a successful life. You've suffered and you've worked and you've felt things deep inside you. Your beauty and your light and your home to me. But I, I just don't have your fires and your yearnings. I'm conventional. A rubber stamp. See, cabbages just aren't beautiful to me, Mama. Dirk, my father used to tell me when I was a little girl that there were only two kinds of people who really mattered in the world. One kind was wheat, and the other kind emeralds. You're wheat, Dirk, like your father. He never thought cabbages were beautiful either, but I loved him, and I love you. <laughs> Yes, 
sometimes they say to me, you must get lonely sitting there alone before your fire through the long winter evenings. But they don't realize how many old friends sit beside me or the laughter that wraps itself warmly about me. And as I listen, I laugh too. I sit here rocking, laughing to myself because, because cabbages are beautiful and I seem to be the only one that knows it. And as I sit and rock, small things I have known and loved in my lifetime, cabbages, colors, dreams, tears, laughter, loom so big, so big. Before James Hilton and Virginia Bruce return, I'd like to tell you of a little incident. I dropped in on a friend of mine who was in the hospital the other day, and it was amazing how many greeting cards that man had received. One card in particular was giving him a lot of entertainment. It's called a Hallmark seven-day cheer card, actually seven different cards with seven envelopes. The idea is to send a card each day for a whole week. Each card contains a riddle, not a difficult one, but a riddle that does require some thinking. And your friend has time for that because the answer doesn't arrive until the next day when another card in the series comes along bringing the answer and a new riddle to start thinking about. I caught my friend between cards four and five and he was really interested. Next time a friend of yours is ill, why not send a Hallmark seven-day cheer card? The entire package of seven cards costs only 50 cents. And I can't think of a better way to give a whole week's pleasure to someone who is ill. Each card has the hallmark on the back, and that tells your friend you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Well, I think that's just another proof that Edna Ferber's stories are full of human understanding. They have an insight into people and a true flavor of America. And Miss Virginia Bruce, may I compliment you on capturing those qualities in your performance this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. I share your view of Edna Ferber. Those of us who have come, come from the heart of this country recognize people we know in the characters she creates. And we recognize the human qualities she paints with words. Things like always hoping that tomorrow brings the fulfillment of our wishes, that tomorrow will be a better day, that we must always look to the future. It's curious, but I guess that's the way we are. Tell me, is that why your Hallmark people created that wonderful little seven-day convalescent card? It's the nicest idea I've ever seen. Well, I don't know if that was the reason, but it certainly fits the philosophy, doesn't it? Well, thank you, Miss Bruce, for being with us here in the Playhouse tonight. And we invite you to listen with the entire Hallmark family next Thursday when we will present John Balderson's beautiful play, Barclay Square, starring that distinguished actor, David Niven. And the following week, we present a play that lives up to its amusing title, And There I Stood With My Piccolo, by Meredith Wilson, starring Meredith Wilson. And the week after that, St. Patrick's Day, Edward McSaul is Our Own Kind, starring Barry Fitzgerald. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Dee Engelbach. Our music is composed and conducted by Lynn Murray. And tonight's script was adapted by Jean Holloway. So until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards, when you care enough to send the very best. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.